been on my mind lately and it's a little bit of a weird topic I uh, feel even strange <laughs> bringing it up but it has to do with the word spinster and funnily enough I don't even know how I know this word because many of my native English speaking friends don't actually know it and they're like asking me what's a spinster what are you talking about spinster is a lady in her older age I guess in her mature age who has never married that's a spinster it's not really a thing anymore it used to be a thing even when I was a child it was still a thing in a way a little bit but even then it was kind of slowly going away these days definitely not a thing anymore but there is something about it that I've been thinking about I guess lately and it is because for so many years of my adult life I always thought of myself as someone who will be in a relationship and who will go through majority of my life from some point on till the rest of my life being in a relationship and I'm actually starting to question the validity of that assumption because I always saw not being in a relationship as a sort of a failure so whenever I was in between relationships that's what it was. It was time between relationships. It was this kind of bit of a less valid time when I was just looking and searching and waiting until my man turned up and then ah, we can breathe again. <laughs> the relationship is happening again. And recently I started to really think about it and I started to kind of unpack it for myself in order to see what's actually really there because it's actually okay to not be in a relationship. Many people are these days deciding that relationships are not for them and that they just prefer to be single. They're better off this way, they're happy, they can take care of themselves, they have enough friends and family around them, uh, that they don't feel lonely, etc, etc. And I was deeply aware of that, but I would still kind of see myself as that sort of a failure as long as I wasn't in a relationship. So still on some level at the back of my head there was that awareness, that thought that okay, it's fine, I'm having a good time, I'm enjoying myself being single, but it's still just nothing more than this between time, between relationships, until my next relationship starts. And it's been now three years since my last significant relationship. And by significant, I mean longer than a year, living together deeply in love, imagining that we would be together forever kind of scenario. So that's been over three years now since I left my last long-term committed significant relationship. I have dated for a few months here and there but nothing transpired into a relationship of the same caliber. And because this whole dating world and the idea of meeting people, dating, hopefully finding and meeting someone that feels like a potential, hopefully exciting kind of prospect. Because of that, because that has been just such a big part of my life for the last three years, I am just 
recognizing that I'm getting a bit tired of it. I'm getting tired of being in that, by default, in being in that mode of waiting and looking for my next relationship. So I decided to make a change. And by a change, I mean that I decided to remain a spinster. And by saying that, I'm not necessarily saying that I will never be in a relationship ever, ever, ever. It's more about accepting being single well into my advanced mature years and maybe forever, accepting that as a valid choice and valid option in life. Not something that is a failure or a damn it, it happened to me and I was not good enough to change that or, you know, whatever other excuse for a for remaining sing single will come up with in our in our heads. It's more that I can make this into a valid option in my own life. And this is significant because I want to live my life by choices that I consciously make. I don't want to be a sort of a victim of any circumstance. Like for example, in this case, I really, a part of me really wants to be in a relationship and yet I'm not, hence I am a sort of a victim here of the situation. So I am scraping that. I'm taking that option off of the table. <laughs> and instead, I am deciding that being single, being a spinster is a valid option and that I am going to enjoy it and have a great time with it until a different or better option comes along. It's a little bit like deciding that I can be single and hating it and having a miserable time of it because I'm failing and because I haven't been able to create a relationship versus being single and having a ball, having the time of my life and enjoying myself and enjoying the kind of, the, the, exactly the kind of life that I am having right now. So you might be asking, Elena, why is this significant? Like, why does it, does it even matter? And it matters a lot. <laughs> Because this is a very possible scenario, to be honest. At this stage of my life, that is that is really an option. And I have really thought this through. Because so many sources are telling us that the reason why it's so much harder these days in the modern world to find a relationship, find a suitable partner and stay together for a significant amount of time is because we are way too individualistic as ourselves and we see our partner as somebody who has to really complement who we are. They have to match us, suit us in a variety of ways and so that we can create this beautiful, romantic, really connected, intimate kind of relationship. Whereas back in the day, only a few hundred years ago, it was more about finding the suitable candidate uh, because of some logistics like joining the, your, your lands together, the farms together, or um, joining the fortunes together of political influence, etc. Or just, you know, literally just like even a few generations before, it was more about just finding the per first person that you liked and marrying them because that's the thing to do. And then you basically had to go through life together because it was wrong or sinful to... Uh, to, to divorce, whereas now I've just, I just break up. I don't have to go through divorce. I don't have to worry about appropriateness or not appropriateness of leaving somebody, separating from someone. I don't have to divorce anyone. So I don't have to go through any sort of difficulties around that. I just break up, I walk away, and then I start dating somebody else. And because of that, instead of marrying my first boyfriend and going on to have a lifelong relationship with him, I've broken up and I've had a number of other relationships since. And even though I know that, I'm aware of that, that maybe there's too much of, of a story in my head about what an amazing guy he needs to be in, what different ways he needs to match me and my values and how we're supposed to create this magic together. Even though I'm aware of that, I still can't quite 
leave that behind and go, okay, I might just call my first boyfriend and see if he's still available. Or I'll just hook up with anybody else on a, on a dating app and just go on to creating a relationship and a marriage, etc. It's just not as simple as that anymore. I can't just now leave behind these ideals that I was brought up with and these ideas that I've been kind of cultivating in my head about what a guy, what an amazing, beautiful guy I want to spend my life with and how I want to have magic with him and I want him to be like someone I admire and love for a variety of reasons. I can't quite leave that behind and just settle for something that isn't that. It's a little bit like as if you were to say to a depressed person, just cheer up. <laughs> and they'll be like, oh, dang, how didn't I think of it? And I made that previous vlog that was quite popular about what I want in a man. And yeah, there was quite a few qualities there and things that are quite important to me. And many of you said you're not asking for too much. When you're a person that brings value, you should be with a person that brings equal if not more, value themselves as well. And that's perfectly fine. But this is why it does leave me in the situation of wondering, will I find him? <laughs> will I ever meet him? Is he out there? You know, three years into being single and dating, I haven't met him. And I don't know if I will ever meet him. So maybe this is why a part of me sort of needs to choose that there is a different option and that I don't have to settle in my life and that actually being single and loving it is a valid option because I really am loving my life. I am having a great time. I have a business that I adore. I have my own home which is which is so beautiful and I'm just gonna keep making it better and better. I have a beautiful family in Europe that I'm gonna keep taking on holidays with me hopefully at least once a year maybe even more often. Here in Australia I have so many beautiful friends that are some of them extremely close to me like family. And I am a person of many hobbies and passions and I am an introvert and I read a lot. So I am so capable of filling my life with things that I love, that I enjoy. So there's just no way I'm going to live a miserable life being single. And by accepting that being a spinster or a single person, let's just call her single person, <laughs> that being a single person for the rest of my life is absolutely valid and okay, that is actually quite liberating and empowering because it doesn't mean that I'm failing. It means that I'm embracing my life, that I'm making my choices, that I'm not a victim of any kind of circumstances, but that I am creating my own life with awareness, with my own choices. I am really curious about your thoughts uh, on this topic and your experiences when it comes to being single. Let me know what you think. And I'm going to leave you with a piece of my own nature right here in my backyard while I go and get some more water. 